When we think about interacting with our computers, the first thing that comes to mind is usually opening different applications, clicking through folders, things like that. But when it comes to executing certain tasks, doing things this way with the mouse and through applications is actually not the most efficient way to get it done. And that's where the almighty command line and languages like Bash come into play. And while you don't need to be some sort of hacking wizard with the terminal, it is important as a data engineer to have some sort of general working knowledge and be able to run some of the basic commands. So in this video, I wanna give you a brief overview of Bash, talk about some of the examples of where you might run into it, and then finally provide five commands to just help you get started. By definition, Bash is a command line interface shell program used primarily in Linux and Mac OS. Okay, so let's break that down a little bit. First, let's start with understanding the purpose of a shell program. So a shell is a computer program that allows you to directly control the underlying operating system through a graphical interface. And you're actually using shell programs all the time without probably knowing it. When you're navigating through, let's say the file explorer and creating and renaming files, technically you're interacting with a shell program interface. Let's say this is a computer operating system. You can think of this of a shell literally like a turtle shell, but just wrapped around that operating system and that hardware. And this shell is what's going to translate your actions that you're clicking or whatever into something that this underlying hardware can interpret and then execute. So Bash is another example of a shell program that is allowing us to interact directly with our hardware. And rather than a pretty file explorer interface, we use the command line interface or a Mac terminal. Okay, so if you're still with me, great job because the most confusing part I think is now over. So let's now talk about examples of where you'll actually use it. There are tons of ways to use Bash scripting, but in the life of a data engineer, you'll primarily use it for creating and editing text files or CSVs, maybe filtering or manipulating data, and then general automation. For a real life example, if we look at a GitHub Actions workflow, we can see it used often in the run step. And within the run step, you are passing commands directly into the terminal of a virtual runner. And one of the scripting languages you can use is Bash. We can't use a mouse to click around on a virtual runner happening outside of our view, but by providing Bash commands, we can achieve the same result. You can also create Bash scripts locally to execute different tasks, maybe on a schedule. I mean, really the options here are endless. And finally, because we aren't opening any fancy windows with a nice UI, more resources can be allocated to executing your tasks, which usually means better performance. Bash is a full language, so I do encourage you to dig in more outside of just this video, but let's just go through a few of the basic examples so you can see it in action. The first one we'll look at is ls, which will list your directory contents. Here I've opened the terminal on my Mac, and when I write ls, we can see it's listing everything in my root directory. And this is useful for quickly seeing where you are in terms of your files, uh, and particularly if you're running this on a remote server where you only have access to a terminal interface, so you can't physically see the file structure. This is the equivalent of looking at my finder, here I have it above, but again, just through a different interface. Next is CD, which stands for change directory. This allows you to move around between directories, which would be the equivalent of clicking with a mouse. If we do CD desktop, it will move us to the desktop folder and we can run LS again to see what the contents are there. Again, this is the equivalent of physically clicking and moving to that directory. Now we can do a CD dot dot to move back up one directory and do LS again to see where we are. We can also press control L to clear the screen. Let's now take a look at how to create a new directory through bash. The command for that is MKDIR followed by the name of the directory. Let's add this to our desktop. So we'll navigate back to desktop by running CD desktop LS to double check our files and now MKDIR and we'll call this bash dash stuff and LS again to see it in the terminal. And if we go through the finder, we can see it there as well. Now that we've created a new folder, let's add a new file to it. We can run CD bash stuff to change into that directory. LS again to read the files and see there's nothing here. And now the command we can run is touch followed by the name of the file we want to create. Let's call it bash demo.sh. And sh is the extension for a bash file, but you can create any type of file you want here with this command. We can see it added it in the finder above. Uh, and we can again write ls to see it in our terminal. 
Now let's say we want to rename the file or move it to a different location. To do that, we can use the command MV, the name of the file, and then the name of the new file or path where you want it to be. For example, we can move this back up to the desktop directory by writing MV, the name of the current file, bashdemo.sh, and then dot dot backslash bash demo. And there we can see it moved it back up a directory. These commands by themselves won't really get you very far, except maybe they'll impress some of your coworkers. But to help you keep going, I've added a link below to a cheat sheet to some of the most common bash commands that you'll run into. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next week.